<laughs> Viva La Vegan! Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and I have with me today Jim Morris. Thank you for joining us, Jim. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. It's wonderful to be talking with you. Yes, and Jim Morris, you're a 79-year-old vegan bodybuilder. What does this mean? Well, it, it means I used to compete. I don't compete anymore. I have a very long competition career. Uh, I won Mr. America and Mr. USA and uh, several other titles. But uh, I, when I was competing, I wasn't a vegan. It wasn't until after I stopped competing that I became a vegan. Uh -huh. And that's when, when I was 50 years old, I became a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, that, that uh, really surprised me as how much muscle I was able to hold and, and keep because, you know, the, the stereotype is uh, if, if you don't eat meat, you're going to get thin and wispy and all of that. But uh, I, I was able to hold it. So I said, well, let me go to the next step mm -hmm. and cut it out completely and cut out all the cheese and the fish and all of that. But uh, here again, it, it was surprising. But I didn't do that until I was 60, 60 years old. And what made you decide to become a vegan, a vegetarian in the first place? Uh, I was living with a guy, uh, we bought a house, mm -hmm. and uh, we adopted a couple of dogs. And up until that point, to me, a dog was a dog. It's an animal, a dumb, dumb animal. And I was amazed at the the uh, relationship he had with those dogs. Mm. Uh, he treated them like they were people and they treated him like he was people. Uh, <laughs> and I realized that there's, uh, there's a person, there's a thinking, feeling person there. Uh, and I, to extrapolate that to, I'm eating a, an, an animal now. Uh, how can I be eating an animal yeah. and loving this animal? So uh, I really, I'm more of an ethical vegan yeah. than an And so, um, so you said you went vegan when you were about 60. Why, why so far along in your life do you think that you were open to these sort of things? Like Bodybuilders uh, live by eating meat. Mm -hmm. And uh, even earlier, I was exposed to my my coach uh, when I moved out here to Los Angeles from New York. My coach was a vegetarian, and uh, I didn't I I didn't even consider uh, you know going to to vegetarian then because the belief is so strong that uh, you're just going to eat that meat otherwise. It, you're not going to be able to compete. Uh, and then when I stopped competing, it opened up the way for me to consider it. Mm. But it, it didn't happen until I stopped competing. And then it just went from one step to the next. Do you think people are a bit brainwashed in the in the bodybuilding industry? Because people people seem to think they need animal proteins to compete or to bulk up. Totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think not only in the bodybuilding, and more so in the bodybuilding, but in sports in, in general. Mm. Football yeah. players, basketball players, yeah. you know, I talk with them about it. Once they find out that I'm a vegan and they you know, want to talk and we talk about it. But uh, no, it's, it's athletes in general, I, the ones I talk to anyway. If yeah. you need that meat, and they're not gonna try it. It's once you've convinced yourself that your career, that your uh, winning, is is because of the meat. Mm. Uh, you're afraid to take the risk. Yeah, and I guess you know I find maybe a lot of people who are training them, and in particular, there's a lot of personal trainers who are coming 
who like especially in Australia and I'm sure in America too there's a lot of personal trainers and they seem to be getting taught the same sort of things that are maybe quite outdated I would say in regards to health in regards to nutrition and the majority of those people just seem to keep spreading the you need protein you need protein to build muscles but you need animal protein so I find that really hard. I know a lot of people who are athletes and um, e- even just into fitness in general, and it seems to be across the board. Well, you know, the the, the industries, all of the industries, the cattle industry, the dairy industry, the poultry industry, <coughs> they, they, they're pouring millions, billions, and over the years, they've poured billions into uh uh, what's what's the word? Like the marketing? Into equating, or? equating protein with meat. Yeah, yeah. So when we think protein, we automatically think meat. Yep. And that's that's it's become part of the culture. Mm. You know, people don't think protein, uh, oh, uh, hemp seeds or you know, protein potatoes or protein beans it's automatically me which is i guess really good marketing isn't it <laughs> over the years oh you know uh, i i had a client once who owned a couple of restaurants a year uh one's called the, well the pacific dining car mm-hmm. and their yes. specialty was meat you know big steaks and, and, and things like that and uh, he got invited once to the cattlemen's trade show meeting down in Texas. Mm-hmm. The, the industry is, uh, and, and he was surprised he got invited because he was he wasn't that big a deal. Mm-hmm. But he met. He said uh, at at one of the conference meetings, committee meetings, uh, they said, you know, the sales are down. You got to do something to, to, to uh, the word out there, and they said, "Well, let's talk to Senator So and So about it." And uh, a couple of months later, there was a government report saying how meat was so good for you and uh, all the good points about meat. And this is the government; hmm. they've got much power. Yes. I hope that they can actually get the government to speak for them. Mm. So it's it's hard to uh, fight that kind of power and and money. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And I always find it interesting that um you know pharmaceutical companies, government, agriculture companies, stuff like that, that people just willingly accept it and they don't realize how much money goes into it. You know and um, how much money they've invested into spreading, you know, meat equals protein, um, milk equals calcium and things like that. So it's pretty scary when you think about it. Oh, it's absolutely frightening. You know, I went to a uh, a farm animal film festival a week ago. It was up in Northern California. Uh, And... uh, one of the films they had there was something called Cowspiracy. Mm, that's a good one. Oh, you've heard of it? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they showed the graphs there. But one of the things that uh, it's, uh, you know about it, but uh, maybe the people watching don't know, mm-hmm. uh, they showed the graphs and they talked about how the environmental agencies, um, Greenpeace and... Uh, the Sierra Club and all these environmental agencies have been quieted mm. by the industry. They're afraid to say anything. They're, they're in absolute denial that agriculture and cows and all of that uh, are causing the climate change. Mm. That surprised me. I really liked I, that documentary, actually. I do too. I yeah. think it's wonderful. Because the guy who did it, um, oh, I can't remember his name at the moment, but um, he he wasn't a vegan when he started. He was just really into environmental in, environmental stuff. Did a lot of things that he thought was help helping the environment or not harming the environment as much. 
and then he discovered right. all all this stuff online about you know how climate change is, is really really um being affected by agriculture in particular and transportation and all that sort of stuff and yeah he just sort of started digging and digging and found out all these big companies that you were just you were just mentioning and charities are not really putting any effort into you know educating people or actually agreeing in a public way about these things they're in denial yeah you know they i i think they've been out, they've been silenced yeah. or bought off it'd be a better word yeah and it's hard i guess when you have like when you're at a certain level like those sort of companies are that you're relying on funding from your members or supporters or volunteers all that sort of stuff and when you start saying oh the best thing for the climate is to go vegan do it today you know empowering <laughs> yourself and empowering others i'm sure there's a lot of people who support them on a monetary level that would freak out <laughs> yes exactly exactly uh and and i think that uh a lot of the, the people who support them knew the the truth mm. about how, how they're really not doing the job that they they claim to be doing. Yeah, I, I think they lose a lot. A lot of I know that they, they lost mine. Not that I ever really donated financially to them. Yeah, but to find out that they really aren't uh, doing the job, it, it's it's like finding out there's no good guys out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> it is it's really yeah, depressing. Make sure if you haven't seen Cowspiracy that you check it out. It's very good. So, Very good. So, Jim, um, you have a website, and Jim's name is spelt J I M, but on his website it's spelt G Y M Morris M O R R I S dot com, and you've got a lot of information there, lots of different articles, and your your um, views on different things. Is is there one or two um, articles that a lot of people find helpful or that are your most um, relevant to people? The one that they they seem to respond most to is about hemp seed. Mm -hmm. and I, uh, a couple of years ago, um, yeah, after I stopped competing, I, I have to I have a goal in order to go in the gym and work out. I'm just like everybody else. I just can't go in and work out just to go in and work out. Yeah. Um, but once I stopped competing, I didn't have that, that goal anymore. But every couple of years, I would pull it in, pull it together just to see. When I was 60, I pulled it together. When I was 70, I pulled it together and had some pictures taken. Then when I was 75, I pulled it together again and had some pictures taken, but that was the first time that I mentioned vegan mm. on the website. And uh, the, uh, the response was, was really re remarkable. Uh, and people wanted to know where you get your, your protein from. Mm. And uh, my, my old coach had uh, years before turned me on to hemp seed. I, uh, and I said, well, let me see, you know, what, what this is all about. So I did it. And uh, the, the hemp seed turns out to be such an incredible source of protein mm. that it's, it's now really sort of basically my, my, my go-to for, for protein. And uh, that's what people seem to respond to more than anything else. Cool. It's got everything in there. It's got all the aminos. Plus all the other vitamins and minerals, and it's got you know uh, carbohydrates in there, uh, even some some sugars. Perfect, and that's that's what people pick up on more than anything else. Mm. And so, when you talk about um, consuming hemp seeds, um, how do you have hemp seeds in protein powder as a snack? Uh, I. I have just the seed itself, just sprinkle it on something, or just put it in my mouth and, and chew it, chew it up. I read somewhere that uh, uh, radishes uh, have a 
high anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. uh, ability. So I'll ha put some couple of spoons of hemp seed in my mouth and then a radish and <laughs> chew it up. <laughs> That's my snack. I've never heard of that combination before. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, most people would do it with uh, some sort of fruit, yeah. you know, grape or something, but uh, I like, I'm weird. I like hemp seeds with a mixture of, say, stone fruits, some shredded coconut and hemp seeds. That's nice. Yeah, a nice that's, little snack. <laughs> it is. That's wonderful. Yes. And and you used to own a gym in West Hollywood, and now um, you train clients at Venice Beach, where you live. Um, how long have you been training people? I when I so well when I moved to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. I started many people. I my first job uh, was with the Los Angeles Police Department, mm -hmm. and uh, they <laughs> let me go. They said I wasn't aggressive enough, so I needed to do something. So I started going around to people's gyms and their homes and, and training people. And uh, then I opened the gym. And you, you mentioned that my website is spelled G-Y-M, mm -hmm. Mars. Uh, when I opened the gym, I put a sign out front saying, Jim Morris, Pastor uh, Free, Jim, G-Y-M. And it seemed like uh, almost weekly somebody would come in and say, you ought to call it Jim Morris. Mm. I thought that was so cute, and I, I thought it was a, a bit over the top. <laughs> but then when I uh, went to do the website and I was looking for a name for the, for the site, all of the J-I-M Morris was taken. So I fell back on that old thing, and it, it catches people's... Um, you know, fancy. Yeah, it's good. It combines both. Both things are important to you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I've been training people ever since. I uh, I stopped for a while when I was uh, working with Elton. I used to bodyguard with Elton John for about fifteen years. That's and interesting. I, yeah, it was. It was fun. Elton John, I went, that would have been a lot of fun traveling everywhere and lots of parties and yeah, there was. But uh, really, I, I only worked with him in the United States. Okay. Elton, he said uh, the United States is the only place he felt needed a bodyguard. Oh wow, that's not a. <laughs> is that good? That sounds scary. <laughs> oh yeah, well yeah. No, he said people in the states tend to be a bit crazy. And he, He's, he's right. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of the world, but like speaking of the United States, it can get get difficult. Yes, and you were um, Elton John's personal bodyguard for 15 years. And then, so yeah. when you finished that, um, you moved to Hollywood. When was that? What year? Well, I, I was already living in Hollywood. I, I've always been in, in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I moved to Venice about 20 five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've always lived in Hollywood. The gym was in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And so you've been training for about 20 years then, training people? Training people, uh -huh. And what do you see the biggest things people come to get training from you? Are they mostly bodybuilders or do they want to lose weight? Are they a certain age? Uh, the, uh, I'm petting the dog down. <laughs> <laughs> Now they're mostly seniors, they're about in their 50s and 60s, even 70s. Bodybuilders don't uh, come to me for, for training, uh, but uh, uh, they, uh, losing weight, not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, people that come to me for training don't, uh, aren't, aren't really overweight, mm -hmm. they're mostly mm -hmm. in, in good shape. They, they, they want to live forever, that's the best way to put it. They want health and they yep. want longevity. Yeah. And so um, you get a lot of the, the older clients there, um, and I guess they'd be inspired by you, seeing you at, at your age still going strong on a vegan diet? That's, that's what I get more than anything else. Uh, everybody says, what an inspiration, what an inspiration. It says, can be done. Yes. You know? And they want to know how to do it. So... 
So if you're in, in the Venice Beach area or if you ever go there for a holiday, make sure you check out Jim and maybe get a bit of a session with him. And you're actually coming to Australia very soon. Yes, Have yes. Have you been I, here before? I've never been there before. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, it'll be no. great. You'll enjoy it. And um, Jim Morris is coming here for the Melbourne Vegan Festival, which will take place on Saturday the 21st of March. That's going to be held at the Corner Hotel in Richmond. You can see cornerhotel.com for tickets or their Facebook for more information. Um, he is also going to be at the Sydney Vegan Festival on Sunday the 22nd. That will be at the Factory Theatre at Marrickville. You can see sydneyveganfestival.com for the schedule and the tickets. And what are you going to be doing at these events, Jim? We're going to be talking about uh, uh, vegan lifestyle and uh, exercising and uh, uh, how to... Uh, uh, how to uh, apply your um, how to apply your particular lifestyle to vegan and vegan to your to your lifestyle? Mm-hmm. Uh, and are you giving a presentation? Are you giving a? Is it just going to be a talk? Will you be posing or anything as well? Just just a talk. Just a talk. <laughs> uh, the posing days are over. <laughs> And what would you give as your top two suggestions for someone that wants to go into the bodybuilding world and is vegan themselves? As a competitor? Yes. In, in the bodybuilding world? Uh, just get it out of your head that uh, you, you need the meat. Um, I, the, the bodybuilders I've talked to uh, are so convinced that they're, they're totally brainwashed about it, and it, it's that belief that's going to hold them back. Because once once they try it, they'll be able to gain weight and hold the size and compete on a, an equal footing with anybody else. But it's getting over that middle belief—that's the hardest thing for them. Definitely. And would you suggest any particular foods? Other, you mentioned hemp seed that you really love. Is there anything in particular people should focus on? Well, you know, protein is in most everything. Seeds. Just eat seeds. Beans, beans are seeds. Mm-hmm. Grains, corn, uh, rice, barley, they're seeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, nuts are seeds. And seeds have everything in them. They, they have to have in order to sprout and become a plant. You know, and it's balanced. You know, we, we, we think about balancing. I've got to balance my carbs and my protein and my this is and my that's and balance it. In a seed, it's all balanced. Otherwise, it won't germinate and it won't sprout and it won't become a plant. Mm-hmm. Everything is balanced. You don't have to worry about balancing it and having vegetables and everything. Uh, a diet of seeds, beans, grains, nuts, and, and vegetables, and even a uh, potato. Potato is a seed. You know, you put a potato on the shelf, it'll sprout. Yep. Yep. Uh, because it's got everything in there that it needs. Uh, yes, seeds, and even fruits. Fruits not only have seeds, but they are seeds. So many, but, many options. Yes, for for protein, and for for bodybuilders, you know, to, and for everybody actually. Yeah. If you have a diet of seeds, you will have everything you need. Mm-hmm. Good, that's very good advice there from Jim Morris. If you'd like to connect with him online, make sure you see his website, spelt G Y M. M O R R I S dot com. Thank you very much for joining us today, Jim. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate it. No problem. And see vivalavegan.net for more interviews with inspiring vegans.